Hello, I'm Ari, your host at Epistemé Entrepreneur. Today, my guest is Dr. Alex Bogdanov, computer scientist by training, PhD in finance from the Moscow State University for Economics. He holds also a master's degree in European private law. Dr. Bogdanov worked as business developer director for the group Mars. If you don't know uh, Mars, I remind you some of the famous brands of this company, Dove, M&M's, Milky Way, Sneakers, Twix, Pedigree, Royal Canin, Whiskas, and many others. Dr. Bogdanov is also a serial entrepreneur, lecturer in business schools where he teaches TRIZ, a powerful problem-solving method. He also teaches IT for business and management skills. Since, two, since November two, uh, 2012, Dr. Bogdanov is the co-founder, CEO of ZST Lawyer, a legal tech company offering online tools that allows you to compose and to submit claims and complaints to relevant authority, as well as to file cases with court without lawyers. Um, nice to have you, Dr. Bogdanov. How are you today? Thank you, Ari. Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you. I'm all yours. Perfect. Thank you very much for, for accepting this interview. It's very interesting to have your your um, your story because your company is very interesting uh, and what it, uh, what, it, what it does for the people so but before starting uh, about zesty lawyers could you please uh, talk about a little bit about your path and your studies and how you um, it brings you to to become an entrepreneur well i uh, joined university of luxembourg uh, by accident uh, and it was a very good accident i took my kids to see uh, the, the, the there was an exhibition in brussels uh, of various universities and so so that they could choose something on their own and I ended up choosing mine and so I was intrigued by the program uh, of European uh, private law because it was offering the uh, the clin uh, clinique du droit which was a consumer uh, clinic uh, allowing the students to answer the real time uh, real situation questions with the supervision of uh, the uh, existing lawyers and I thought, that, I thought that was great. It really brings you to the practice. And that's actually what I'm all about. I mean, uh, I, I don't need any theoretic studies. I mean, it's just I'm not that kind of person, but I need hands on things and, and where the ways and tools to solve problems. And so uh, it allowed me to study just for one year, uh, which was great. I had uh, lots of previous experience in what I'm doing now. Uh, and uh, yes, I graduated. I also finished the uh, uh, CCDL, uh, the uh, Cour du Droit Luxembourgeois, uh, so that uh, I uh, normally uh, can uh, join the Bar Association of, of Lawyers in Luxembourg any moment. So, um, yeah, it, uh, what was interesting also, and one of the reasons why I joined also, that I knew that the, the uh, university had an incubator mm -hmm. and that in, uh, it, it, it was a possibility to combine the studies and uh, the development of my uh, legal technology uh, tool that I was I started working on quite a while ago. I had a big break, but uh, I thought I would take it to a new level with the with the uh, possibilities that uh, the incubator is offering. So uh, the idea of Zesty uh, Lawyer emerged during uh, during uh, your master degree in law, or uh, was it something that already uh, uh, you had in, in your mind before that? Because yes, you have, I, sorry, you have a rich a career a path uh, before before coming in Luxembourg. You know, as I said, you you were director of a business development for a big company, and you have you were also serial entrepreneur before that, right? Yeah, that's true. I um I was thinking about it uh, for 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 quite a while, and uh, well, I was born in Moscow. I'm originally I'm a Russian, uh, even though I moved. Uh, to work for Mars in 2008, so I moved to Belgium. So I, I have bo both nationalities, and that actually helps to uh, to really navigate in, in European Union these days. And so I have uh, I've been working on it for quite a while. Uh, we, the the idea that I had, I mean, because I had my own experience, is that uh, there are so many things that can be resolved and eased for people. Uh, with simple letter or with simple requests of the authorities, and people just don't realize it can be done. Uh, and what is uh, more strikingly is that uh, people can complain or people can uh, ask for a, for a solution, for a problem to be resolved uh, uh, that doesn't concern themselves. 
So if I'm, 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 for example, in Brussels, I can introduce and complain, uh, complaint about something that has happened somewhere else on the other side of the country. And this is perfectly legal. And that has uh, uh, value and that has force. And uh, the situation may, may be resolved. And so I have, uh, uh, yes, bef I was working on that. Uh, I would develop a solution for uh, Russian Federation. Because uh, well, before I before I left Russia in 2008, I knew how to, how things were working there, and uh, my my I just wanted really to empower people with such a tool where they would feel safe, where they would not need to be uh, uh, lawyers themselves, uh, where they would just answer the the question about the situation that has emerged, and that the system would would do everything else for them. And so it worked uh, during 2012 elections, uh, a, a presidential elections uh, in um, in Russia. We have received over a thousand complaints. I was already in in Belgium by then, but you know we just wanted to support the the uh, compatriots. And uh, at the moment, at at that, at that time, the electronic democracy was very popular, and uh, it, 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 Russian internet was full of uh, initiatives, and uh, you could see the the ideas boosting at that moment. Uh, now it's uh, apparently much more <laughs> controlled by the state, and that's why I'm not there. Uh, so we launched it; it worked, but um, uh, I had to put this idea uh, aside uh, because, uh, well, I burnt out at some moment. I uh, I have attracted an investor who stepped away and uh, at the very last moment. So really, I, I felt I needed a new uh, a new push, uh, and uh, I thought, well, I'll do it at some at at some moment later, and that's what is happening right now. So uh, you knock it at the door of the incubator and entrepreneurship program of the University of Luxembourg, and how? Um, How was it work? How how uh, did did this this program work for you at that moment? Um, I participated at some lectures and, and some courses that Incubator has been organizing. I think what is uh, absolutely outstanding is that uh, it uh, Incubator brings in uh, the very interesting guest speakers, uh, mm -hmm. like a professor from um, uh, Massachusetts Institute of Technology with whom we have had uh, a very joyful and uh, insightful uh, uh, training for two days uh, on campus. Uh, and there are many other things. Uh, it's, it's like uh, the, the PR uh, uh, manager, she, Lisa, she is, uh, is doing an outstanding job. I get, I get lots of value. So what happened is I just, uh, yeah, I wrote to them and said, well, I, I have an idea. I'm, a, I'm a still a student and um, can, we, can we talk? And, Whenever you want to start, you just have to start talking. So this is the <laughs> get there and start talking. And so, yeah, the response was quite quick and uh, we organized the first session. Uh, so uh, the good, uh, there's there's positive atmosphere, there's positive attitude. So uh, yes, you may think, yeah, most uh, startups will fail, blah, blah, blah. But uh, I mean, it's not necessarily about your startup, it's also about yourself. Uh, the more uh, ready you are, the more experienced you are, the more daring you are, the faster you can get to to something, to some success. And so that's that, that's the the attitude the, that incubator has. And I think it's not only about uh, supporting uh, 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 your project uh, per se, but also is 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 it's empowering you, you as as entrepreneur, which is absolutely important, which is the key. So uh, yeah, we had the first session. We found a mentor, and we started. Uh, what what I needed for myself, I had full of, had plenty of ideas, and you know the legal field is huge. So I needed help in concentrating on to focus on some on some area, and that's uh, where uh, incubator has helped. Uh, yeah, so this is how it started, and it, it it goes on. So they bring you in the process of. Uh of designing uh, a minimum viable uh, service, right? right? Yes, the, the, the first thing is, uh, uh, I mean, I have had lots of experiences before and I've been yes. working on my own, but still, I mean, I'm, I'm as I would say, I'm, I'm uh, uh, burning in my own ideas and I don't see from the outside. And so I'm skewed, I'm not uh, objective mm -hmm. by default. 
and I may have hard times choosing what is really needed. And so what is really required is an expert look on uh, uh, what may work. So one one big uh, chunk that uh, that is that looks promising on on which one should concentrate. And so, uh, and if you, if you start working on it, yes, uh, you, you you grow to the MVP, yes, minimum viable products, something that already can fulfill uh, ambition, uh, the minimal ambition, the minimum problem solving. And so, once it's done, once it starts selling, once you prove the concept, so MVP is needed to show to some to, to key users and possibly investors that it uh, that. Uh, the approach works and that it's needed and there is there is customer base for it so yeah you have to do it and that's uh, the first thing is to focus and to uh, just get one thing done and this mvp uh, did you test it on Est on the estonian uh, era right or is it another story this? yes it's uh, well well it's uh, it's a, um, if you allow me two minutes i'll just briefly explain what's going sure, on so sure. yeah la last year so that was 2020 when the covid started i have uh, i have launched a service a, a free online service to help people overcome the issues of covid like suddenly all people had to cancel their plane tickets suddenly people start uh, started losing their jobs but still had to pay rent Uh, suddenly, they had uh, to rec uh, to get uh, help from from the state. But how do you do it? You just don't know what to do. The biggest problem in legal uh, is that you don't know where to go and what to say, whom to ask. So the help is there. The, the, the question the, the question is how you get to it, not what you need to do, but how do you do it? It's so a real practical stuff. And so I launched a service that helped people resolve these legal issues. If you are still uh, want to uh, decrease your rent, you need to talk to your uh, landlord. And uh, the first thing you need to do is to write a proper letter. So, okay, you go to my website, Viral Help. It, I called it Viral Help. Uh, it's just to, um, it's, a, it's a play of words. It's a viral because I want it to be viral for everyone. It just goes viral without the advertising. And viral because we had virus. So, uh, Viral Help, you go, uh, it works in multiple languages, and you just answer the questions, and you get letters that you send to your, land, uh, to your uh, uh, landlord. To, the, to negotiate uh, your, uh, renegotiate your rent. You uh, write letters, you just impose, uh, answer the questions and you get uh, a letter that you send to the airline and to the controlling authorities to get the tickets refunded. So that's what I did last year for, for, for Luxembourg and Belgium and for the countries around. And uh, this year, it just, I felt that there is, uh, the people are burning because, because of the lockdowns, because of uh, job losses. There is uh, th that people require the the I would say to release vapor and to be em empowered with the legal tools that would help them resolve their issues. And it just happened that uh, in Estonia, which is also a member of European Union, on the far for somebody somebody who doesn't know where it is, it's it's it's, it's somewhere between Sweden and Russia <laughs> or Finland and Russia. Uh, yeah, people were protesting against uh, passing a law that would allow. Um, uh, uh, Ministry of Health of Estonia to penetrate uh, the houses uh, and the, the cars and to do the people search and uh, house search without any special warrant. And this is a very uh, new thing for, for, for such a small country, which all, always posi positioned itself as a democratic one. So people started protesting uh, be before the uh, parliament square. I mean, there, was, there were lots of people. They haven't seen it for many, many, many years since the collapse of, of the Soviet Union. And so our job was not to uh, get into politics, but really to channel their energy into the legal tools. I mean, it's fine to protest, but you still need to say something in the proper way. So that's what we did. So uh, uh, over uh, a weekend, we have built uh, an MVP, which uh, allowed people to sign a, a, a letter. It's like a, an order. It, it's, a, it's a direct democracy. You tell your deputy that's in the parliament not to vote uh, uh, for this law, or you tell him to, to vote against it. And this is perfectly legal. You just tell him not to do it. And you send this letter to everybody, to all of the members of the, of the parliament, to all the commissions. So people sign it digitally, We send it directly to to to, to the uh, to the uh, deputies, uh, and so they you create uh, you create power, you create um, uh, uh, a pressure 
Mm. So that everyone in the parliament understands that people are not just gathering uh, in, in the front of the parliament, drinking uh, tea and coffee and chatting, but there really there's something, there's substance behind it. And so we ended up sending over a million emails uh, and the bounce rate uh, was zero. So uh, just because of that, uh, uh, Amazon offered us their capacity to do mailings because they saw the very good statistics. It was never, I mean, we had no bounce and no spam. It's because it's a digital signature. So we, so we have done that. And so there are other, uh, other initiatives that we have uh, put uh, through this service. Uh, I also um, I I help local Estonians to, to, to fight uh, the consequences of uh, all these demonstrations because some people have been uh, arrested and so they need help. But um, I think I may have answered your question already, but uh, w w uh, if you allow me, I'll tell you what happens next as, as a MVP, also MVP. I think uh, for us, uh, it's very important to be able to create pressure in a very legal way. So we don't need any 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 revolution here. But uh, what we're working on now and launching within uh, a few weeks is um, uh, as a solution. It's it, it's a, it's like an online complaint system. So whatever happens to you, you, you need to complain. What you do, you answer a few questions, and um, uh, on our system. The, the system composes the, the, the letter of complaint uh, properly written in a legal way and it decides where it has to go and it sends this letter to the authority. Uh, if they don't re respond within uh, five days, which is a legal requirement in Estonia, we send a reminder and if there is no response, we send it to the ombudsman that will take care of the, the administrative ombudsman that is actually empowered to influence the, the, the authorities. But what, what is more important, we put uh, the status of every complaint online. So mm -hmm. everyone, every person can go online and see, especially on the eve of elections, see how every ministry and how every region has been handling their own complaints. And to create more pressure, you press a link and your complaint is shared with your friends and they sign it and they sign this complaint. Remember I said you can complain just about anything which, which not necessarily happened to you. You sign it as well. And so that way, imagine uh, a mayor, a mayor received, uh, receives not just one letter, but 500. <laughs> but for example, uh, in, in Brussels, uh, in the commune where I'm registered, uh, we only need 3,500 votes to change the Burgemeister. Mm -hmm. What is 3,000 votes these days? I mean, in, in, in the, so we, can, we can collect it. So really what is needed is creation of the pressure. So this is how, um, uh, uh, this, is, uh, this is what we're working on now. Uh, I see that uh, the, uh, I mean, the, the, the biggest question is now who is going to pay for it. So far we're paying for it ourselves, but uh, the end users we see may be themselves the authorities because they also need the proper structuring of uh, of the complaints because I've been talking to a few burgomaster and they said, well, we received thousands of letters and only my secretary can know what to do with them because they are pro very, very poorly written, they are full of emotions and we don't know what people, are, what really people want. So we want to structure that, we want to really empower people with, w w give them hope and give them instrument for change and get them, get them the instrument, a perfectly legal uh, instrument to get their problems resolved. So this is what we, what, at what stage we are now. This is a uh, very interesting and very powerful uh, tools. Uh, um, how uh, a claim are initiated? Is it, uh, I mean, a citizen in Estonia who, who contact you and say, I would like to change this, or is it uh, initiated by you and then you are, you are calling people to join? No, it's it's uh, it's yourself. It's a citizen. So he has a problem and says, "How do I resolve it?" He goes to us and he gets uh, start, starts a, a questionnaire that will basically get the answer. I mean, we will need we would only need the, the factual information: what happened, with whom, uh, who you think is at blame, uh, has there been any uh, damages made, or is uh, the bare minimum information that we need to, to route the, the, the complaint to the proper authority and for the authority to start investigating. 
We also need to separate claims from uh, typical uh, for, for normal authorities like mayor or uh, I don't know Ministry of Health from police because uh, most people think oh something happens I have to call police which is not not true and the time is lost and uh, and time is wasted for police which is not good so um, uh, and the the citizen himself creates the complaint and he's uh, he's just sharing it with his friends or any supporters or anybody and that way. Uh, many complaints are sent about the same subject, which makes the authorities really, uh, really shake and and do the job. And we put it online, so it's supervised. Anyone can see. Um, is is it? Uh, can can we compare this solution to you know the? Um, I'm I'm searching the the word in the um, in English. Uh, Change.org. Yes, this kind of platform. I don't believe in them because, uh, well, first of all, we have to be very careful because uh, many, I'm not saying it, this about change.org, uh, but uh, many tools like this are created by uh, the government so that people can release the vapor and nothing is happening. It's just because, so people can talk. There are many groups in Facebook that are created so people can re discuss and blame the ministers and the governments but nothing can be taken out of it because they're controlled by the governments. Uh, and I don't believe in change.org because, uh, first of all, I think you have a very devalued idea because you can complain, you can create a petition just about anything. Uh, let's protect the blue cats and, okay, now you sign up 100,000 people and we send it to the government. Uh, wrong. Uh, I think it's a wrong approach. Also, I don't like the word petition because we, we ask for pity of the authorities to do something for us, which is wrong and because they work for us and not us for them. So I just don't like the idea. So we're not asking and you send it to the not to the government who has the executive power, but you send it to the parliament and parliament has no money. I mean, what will they do? They can only pass a law, but imagine passing a law uh in uh, in the country it may take months before it's it's just accepted so um and the biggest issue i mean all of this politics aside just uh, on on a, a practical uh, practical issue okay now you created this petition now get 100,000 people to support you mm -hmm. this is almost impossible because uh, what we want to do is to is to have people who are already there for you Imagine you don't pay for, for creating a complaint with us, but we say, okay, you don't pay us, but next time your neighbor or just anybody, uh, George, John, whoever who has a similar problem as you, you sign for him as well. Uh, you don't need to be a, a friend with him, but you need to sign for him. That way you don't pay to us, but you help him. And next time you have a problem, he will sign for you. And that way we'll create a uh, hundred, two hundred, five hundred, uh, a thousand complaints that will arrive on the same subject, on the same table, to the same person who will have to handle all that. Imagine one letter and imagine one thousand letters. Mm -hmm. Of course, I mean, this uh, deputies in, in, in the parliament, they, were, they just went crazy. They, they, there was an article uh, in, in the local press in, uh, in Estonia uh, uh, calling me the, the hairy hand of Kremlin. So uh, as because I'm Russian by descent, they said, OK, of course, if I'm Russian, they have to play this card and say, OK, well, this is a this comes from 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 Russia. Bullshit. But uh, <laughs> that's the price I have to pay yeah, for, 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 for having the uh, Bogdanov uh, name. I don't know if Gr Igor and Grishka are, are having. Yes, the same are very issues. famous in France. Yes. But I, I don't know if they if they are uh, having the same issue as me. But apparently, I have to. Yeah, I, I'm sometimes treated just as a, as a as a normal Russian. But anyway, um, uh, this is. I think this is the way to go. This is uh, uh, this is the act of electro. This is the act of direct democracy. It's perfectly legal. Uh, I think uh, the next steps would be is is, is really the ele electronic democracy. Is really electronic government. And um, yes, it, it, it exists in various stages, in various uh, solutions in various countries. But if, if you look at Belgium, that's, uh, yeah, it's like a puzzle that not always is uh, resembles together. Same in Estonia, even though it's a very advanced uh, electronically, still there are like uh, the, the many, there are many different formats and solutions which are in, not capable with each other. So there is no total solution like easy one in one place Apparently, so, russia is doing that they they have it but mm. fine let's leave it aside 
so never nevertheless uh the uh how can i say uh even if uh the local country based law are different in europe uh you your solution can target the right um uh, executive or legal um how can i say counterpart for the this kind of initiative so, so you can uh, so you can bypass all this difference between countries because you know exactly where to where to hit i i think uh, if we need to roll out uh, in france for example we would uh, probably need uh, a, a maximum a month for preparation and we can and i think we will we'll, we'll launch in france quite soon uh it's i know the principle Mm. Uh, and and it, it is essentially the same uh, a, a across the countries and people still need the same quality aid and people cannot afford uh, the lawyers for every single small problem. So uh, it, th this exists everywhere. Uh, 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 people have disbelief in governments and their abilities to solve their issues. And uh, uh, very typically, we, well, they have to just uh, uh, hope on themselves. I mean, just uh, the, the ho their their fate is in their own hands, and we just give uh, them give them aid for that. Absolutely. Uh, and how about and and about uh, the foundation of uh, of your of your company, Zesty Lawyer? Uh, do you have a team around you, uh, or do you work alone? Because you have also the IT background. So, uh, how do you build this, the IT solution? Um, I uh, have my uh, uh, co-founder in Estonia, so mm -hmm. she is the system architect. We use uh, designers and the coders who are based uh, in every part of the world, well, not every part, but then outside of our organization. So they are freelancers who are engaged in full time working for us. So um, at this moment, this is enough. Mm. Uh, I also uh, am. I have uh, opened an office in Estonia. I mean, just signed up, so I will I will be able to receive people with their daily issues, and I will train people to uh, replace me when I'm gone. Because uh, uh, our, uh, why we chose Estonia is because there was uh, there were these events. The people were interested. There was an urgent need. And because we wanted to test uh, on a nation that is uh, open to, to uh, electronic solutions, which is Estonia, so that we could uh, test it and then r go somewhere else, which is classical. Uh, you don't go into a big market and, uh, with, with the possibility of failure. So uh, let's try somewhere else on a lower scale and see uh, how it works. The, yeah, so um, we're ready for, for, for new countries, I think, starting the, uh, starting the uh, autumn. Mm. And uh, the next step is uh, France, right? Uh, I, I was thinking about it, uh, and apparently, uh, yeah, I think France may be may be good. I, I don't I don't know if Luxembourg really needs it because uh, it's a small country. Uh, where I think what we need to do, and and I'm, I I haven't decided properly, is uh, that kind of solution that I'm working on is needed for all expats. Mm -hmm. Definitely, this is a this is a good market. So Belgium and and Luxembourg may actually work. Very but, international uh, I, countries. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, but I think uh, we we have many national problems uh, uh, and a big bigger market. So probably would need to concentrate just on the bigger market. Uh, I think where it also may work is Middle East. Uh, interestingly, uh, United Arab Emirates they are investing quite a bit into the electronic uh, services. Uh, and you can contact the government through all the electronic means. So I think there it may serve as well. But uh, we will we will start the the the, 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 the proper investigation and, and research closer to the autumn. Right now we're polishing off. We need to launch uh, finally the 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 module the the solution for complaints and for the st nice statistics which need to, we need to gather and publish nicely so that people can supervise. So. We have something to do, uh, so yeah, autumn we will see some changes, I hope. So, uh, if uh, there is an initiative that is launched on your platform, then you you target you you send this in the, the, the result of this of this initiative to the legislative uh, uh, or, or the executive uh, um, of a compa of a country. Uh, what happens then? They are, they are legally. Um, 
they have they have to to accept it, right? They have to accept it like it, like it was a, a real people who knock at their door and complaining, right? Uh, it depends on the situation on the country. Uh, in uh, interestingly, in Russia, there is 30 days uh, through which the government uh, official must give you a response on the matter of the case. Mm. In Estonia, according to the law of public information, it's five days to give you a response. Uh, such a practice does not exist in Belgium at mm. all. There are, there's only one uh, deadline by which uh, uh, it's six months is the moment you sent a letter to the tax authorities. If they fail to respond, it means you're right. But if you're right, you still need to go to enforce your, your, your uh, position in the court. So this is totally disaster. And the only way you can do is to involve an ombudsman Uh, but ombudsman is again is is horizon of one or two months so people are really they, they're lost they, 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 the authorities are not obliged to uh, to give you a response within a certain deadline so what we want to do we want to change that we want to, the authorities to 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 respond on time to respect the public and we want to make it also a transparent so so everyone can see how every ministry, every ministry and every region has uh, uh, responded and handled complaints. Uh, so, yes, they must accept it. Will anything happen? I don't know. But if we create pressure and if we also use ombudsman uh, and we make it all public and visible for everyone to see, yes, they will work. And also if we create pressure by adding uh, additional signatures, of course it will work. It just has to work. And should I... Uh fill your form with my uh, identity because mm -hmm. it's, I think it's, it's important how could you protect yourself against uh, boats uh, and uh, not even not just boats even human being uh, you know in a, in a click farm or, or such kind of you who can feel you know a form for bad for bad reason uh, that's a very good question uh, we will um, we will have the uh, filtering uh, human filtering first definitely and uh, once once they once we have trusted users then we can uh, allow them to post uh, uh, on a, on a on a faster scale yes there are issues to be resolved here and uh, I'll, uh, last time i remember when we uh, when i had the complaints uh, module on the on the election fraud uh, 2012 we had uh, 1000 complaints but about 5000 bots so 5000 complaints that were void So uh, yeah, there, there, there'll be things to resolve. But uh, what I also uh, looking forward to is to involve uh, students to help us, students who are interested in IT, students who are interested in civil uh, uh, technologies or in, uh, in legal, uh, just to join us and to help in, in such a project because it's not only IT changing, it's also civic technology. It's, mm -hmm. it's, something, quite, it's something new and, and something that concerns everybody. Absolutely, there is a, an evangelization of the behavior, also of people yes. of, of using this kind of uh, of technology. Absolutely brilliant! It's a very very nice uh, tools, and, uh, and I really appreciate uh, uh, your pitch. It's very very promising, and I think France will be a great place for your tools because we have a lot of complaint. People a lot of love complaint here on the street. Uh, many times against the government, against everything. But I think your solution can be a great solution for us here in France. Thank you very much, Dr. Bogdanov. Uh, If you allow me a last, a last question, yeah. uh, could you offer one or two key pieces of advice to, to first-time entrepreneurs? Oh, <laughs> uh, a piece of advice is just uh, be happy uh, there. I mean, you have to dare. Mm. Uh, go for your. Uh, if, if you like what you do. You'll be happy if you don't. If you're not happy with what you do, you will you you, you will ruin your life. So if you have a dream uh, and you want uh, uh, do it, otherwise, uh, yeah, just do it. Uh, it's okay to fail. It's okay to fail. It's okay to try. Is uh, as long as you keep your eyes open and ears open, uh, you, you will make it. It's just there. I all if I don't know something, I just go and I resolve problems as they arise. I mean, just go forward, don't look back. That's all. Thank you very much. It's very inspiring and and uh, very promising. Also, all all you have accomplished until now, and we follow you. We will follow you carefully because uh, we want your solution in front. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ari. Have a good Thank day. You. Bye. You also. Bye bye.